Hello there, you beautiful people. My name is Willow, and welcome back to another Fallout Challenge run. My last run in Fallout New Vegas with only vets was a fun romp, and today we're gonna follow it up with something similar as we find out if I can beat Fallout 4's survival difficulty as a sentry bot with the added twist of a permadeath run. Before we get into the run, let's lay down some ground rules. I must play the entire game as a sentry bot, and if I die, I have to restart from the beginning. I must play the entire game on the survival difficulty. I can't use any bugs or glitches on purpose to exploit the game. I will only be using visual mods, with the exception of the Playable Robots mod. And I can't use console commands for anything but fixing bugs. With the rules of the run laid out, let's take a look at the challenge itself. I think this run is going to be exceptionally easy from a combat perspective, and honestly, it should be a breeze as long as I don't slip up in the late game, as that could cost me many hours of progress. So overall, I'll need to be focused in the entire time, and that's kind of the real challenge here. Anyways, I write these scripts as I go, and all of this part has been written prior to beginning the run. With that, let's get right into the run, where we start in my pre-war bathroom as a normal man married to a Protectron wife. On this day, I decided to adopt my wife's religion of robotology, and as such, I must become a sentry bot for her. So I open up the console and enter all of the commands for me to do just that, and here we are in our pristine pre-war house, staring out at the neighborhood until a man knocks at the door, and I answer before telling him, all about my primary directives, including my robot identification name and my hardware specifications. This unit features a 3 in strength for carry weight, 1 in perception as accuracy doesn't matter, 10 in endurance because I cannot fail by being frail, 1 in charisma because who needs it with dual miniguns, 7 in intelligence so I can solve all the problems in my path, 5 in agility for quick battlefield maneuvers, and 1 in luck as robots don't believe in such silly concepts. With my special stats set, I loiter around the house until my fleshy offspring starts sounding an alarm, and I spend a while trying to parse my primary objective while standing next to his crib before the TV comes on and warns of a nuclear war that just started. I then make like Optimus Prime and roll out to the nearby vault platform while managing my heat levels along the way. I then ride the elevator down into the vault as a nuclear bomb explodes and squeeze myself into a cryopod alongside Protectron Nora until a man comes along to shoot Nora and kidnap Sean before I take another nap and wake up in the vault where I run around in circles trying to herd all of the rad roaches out of the vault door room. This takes super long, but luckily I managed to find this awesome holotape that lets me play my favorite mobile games on the Pip-Boy. Oh wow, the Pip-Boy really can't handle gaming, but you know what can? The Red Magic 9S Pro featuring an unrivaled mobile gaming experience made possible by the top of the line Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 processor with up to 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage alongside their quite frankly amazing ice cooling system consisting of a cooling gel paired with a 22,000 RPM fan that not only moves heat but does so quietly. I've been using this phone for about two weeks now and it is genuinely the best phone I've ever had. Before trying it out, I almost never played mobile games as my old phone would just get so hot I couldn't hold it and it would slow down all the time. But with the 9S Pro, I've been playing games like old school RuneScape, Beach and Clash of Clans all the time. It really makes me want to open my phone and play games, and I keep finding new features on this phone which are incredibly cool. For example, think about your phone's wallpaper right now. It's probably just a picture or something, right? Well, mine lets me play Snake and Tetris while I'm having to wait in line at the store or on a walk. That was just completely mind-blowing to me, and on top of that, there's more options if you don't want to play games on your wallpaper. Instead, you can have an AI waifu if that's your cup of tea. Honestly, this phone has ruined other phones for me, and I don't think I can go back to my old one, and I'm finding new features and functionalities every day since I got it. Make sure to check out the phone yourself using the link in the description as well as the pinned comment. Anyways, back to the rad roaches, I managed to eventually herd them all out of the vault door room, taking next to no damage as my armor is incredibly high. So after that, I just hide for a little while until I'm no longer detected, and then levitate a Pip-Boy which I use to open the vault door and exit into the Commonwealth Wasteland. I then spend an entire hour troubleshooting this mod, as it was really not wanting to work after having to roll 
roll back the game from the next gen update and reinstall the mod. After about an hour, I emerge from the jank as a factory fresh sentry bot with a brand new set of paint, and with that out of the way, I decide to get started on my primary directive of finding Sean by searching the neighborhood with Codsworth. After dealing with some minor flying threats, Codsworth points me in the direction of Concord, so I head over there and get stuck into a very short and one-sided engagement with a group of raiders. After felling them, I head inside the Museum of Freedom, where the firefight continues, and the entire battle is over in moments as I use my ruthlessly efficient miniguns to remove these lowly raiders from the mortal coil before speaking with the last Minuteman, Preston Garvey. He asks me to help him deal with the remaining raiders outside, and I oblige by heading out of the museum and continuing my campaign of carnage, killing all of the raiders, and a deathclaw without so much as breaking a sweat. The combat so far has been laughably trivial, and I don't expect that to change any time in the near future, but I do expect it's going to get a little bit harder as I level up some more. I then return to Preston, and he mentions heading over to Sanctuary Hills, and that I should meet up with him there sometime. I agree to do so, and then head outside while using a level up to take the cannibal perk, which I quickly make use of by turning one of the dead raiders into little more than oil for my gears. I meet up with Preston in Sanctuary, completing the quest, and getting a new one from him that sees me heading towards the nearby settlement of Ten Pines Bluff as they need help dealing with some raiders. I get engaged in some mindless violence along the way there, and oh is it so much fun to just mow down everything in a hundred foot radius with my dual miniguns. I speak with one of the settlers, and they ask me to clear out the Corvega assembly plant of raiders. So I start making my way towards Lexington and kill my first robot enemy, a Mr. Gutsy, along the way. It really wasn't that difficult, but I'm excited to see how robot on robot combat combat is throughout this run. Anyways, I make my way to Lexington and kill a couple of raiders and some ghouls before getting locked into the cannibal animation and getting pummeled to death by a bunch of ghouls. Huh. Well, that really sucks. A death is a death, so I guess I'm gonna go back to the beginning of the game and I hope you all enjoy this montage of me getting back to this point. Alright, so here I am again, back in Lexington, and this time I didn't take the cannibal perk. I make my way to the Corvega assembly plant and turn all of the raiders in and outside into nothing more than a fine red mist as I use the Mulch Maker 10,000 on each and every one of them until the factory falls dead silent and I get to leave and make my way south towards Diamond City. On my way to the big city, I take on my first raider settlement and it's my first encounter with a power armor opponent, and I think this is a good indication for how difficult the run will get. I expect enemies will go from pushovers to actual problems once I get enough levels, so I still need to be careful if I don't want to lose hours of progress later on in the run. Anyways, I move on from the raiders and decide to take on some super mutants next, which go surprisingly the same. They do pose a very minor threat, but as long as I take my time, they are just incredibly easy to deal with, so moving on, I enter Diamond City by playing along with Pi 
Piper's Lie before leaving the city and making my way east until I reached the Boston Public Library. Oh, hey, quick note from Willow in the future. I forgot to mention that I've been streaming on Twitch instead of YouTube recently, so make sure you go down in the description and grab yourself a link to the Twitch channel and hit follow if that's what you're interested in. Also, if you are a YouTube member, please consider going over to the community tab as I have just set up a members only discord that you can join using a link on one of my posts where I join my brethren in a heated battle with a massive horde of super mutants. You may have noticed that I keep on taking more and more challenging fights and that's because I'm trying to gauge how strong I really am. I know from my previous runs that this robot mod really doesn't scale well. Early game you are pretty much a god and unkillable and deal a massive amount of damage but the later you go the harder things get. So I'm trying to see exactly where my limits are, but it's really not that difficult to deal with all the super mutants here either, and with all of the green uglies terminated, I leave the library and make my way over to the nearby park, where I pick another fight, this time with a super mutant behemoth named Swan, and the fight is tense, but I take minimal damage as his ranged attacks are really slow and my DPS is insane, so Swan only manages to get his rocks off on me one or two. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh man, yeah, Swan really got his rocks off on me, you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> so dumb. Oh yeah, I was watching this Willow video and about 10 minutes in he just loses his mind talking about super mutants named Swan getting their rocks off. It made me really uncomfortable, I think I'm just gonna unsubscribe. Anyways, moving on and away from Swan's corpse, I make my way in to Park Street Station and start unleashing all hell on the Triggerman inside. It really is just a bloodbath of epic proportions as I cleave through room after room of nostalgic criminals giving them no mercy or quarter. I eventually find myself in a room with a a man named Dino who I dispatch with haste before saving a robot detective named Nick Valentine. I then continue in this glorious slaughter of fedora wearing Thompson wielding Al Capone wannabes until I meet their boss and his girlfriend. I quickly turn them into mulch just like all of his henchmen before heading outside and speaking with Nick about my missing spawn. I then tell him I'll meet him later in his office before heading vaguely north where some communist sympathizers would have you believe that I killed the crew of the USS Constitution and including Ironsides, but this lander is most poor in taste and in reality, I make my way over to the historical vessel and get recruited by Ironsides to help him take his fine ship to the skies once more to fight the communist threat. It's at this point I realize that the mod has made me a slightly smaller sentry bot than the standard variety, as I have a staring contest with Ironsides and he is in fact much taller than me. This is all likely because the mod maker wanted the sentry bot to actually be able to fit through most most of the doors in the game, and this is useful for actually being able to play the game, but it means that I've already lost the run and in fact cannot beat the game as an actual sentry bot. Regardless of this, I am going to play through the entire game anyways, so I proceed to help out the crew by firing the cannons as some scavengers attack the ship, and after that I run around repairing some damaged components on the ship before mowing down the nearby group of scavengers so I can take a guidance ship from them. I then run over to this pre-war facility to get another gizmo for Mr. Navigator killing some Meyer Lurks as I do before returning to the Constitution and getting the final quest from Ironsides to head over to Fort Hagen and get some turbo pump bearings for the main engines of the Constitution. So I head over to the fort and start cutting a path through all of the synths and turrets inside and the combat here was kind of worrying as the lasers from the synths can do a lot of damage very quickly but for now my DPS is still enough to stop me from taking too much damage. As they say the best defense is a good offense and that's it's really working out for me right here. Anyways, I kill off the synths and grab the turbo pump bearings before returning to the ship to install them. I then defend the ship once more alongside the crew before heading over to this nearby building and flipping a switch to send the Constitution soaring through the skies. I then head over and meet up with a sentry bot at the Cabot House and hang out for a little while before making my way to Diamond City where Nick interviews me about the abduction of the small fleshy one. I answer all of his questions and then head over to the mayor's office and convince them 
to give me a key to Kellogg's house, where, once inside, I find a hidden room with a way to track Kellogg using his cigars and dog meat. I give dog meat the cigars so he can track the scent of Kellogg before ignoring dog meat and taking a nice swim in the river to get to Fort Hagen even faster. I then blow up some turrets on the roof and make my way inside the fort for the second time this playthrough, and it goes identically to the first. I turn these synths into scrap metal with ruthless efficiency until I eventually reach the underground section of Fort Hagen, where I continue dismantling the synths one by one before delving into the final room with Kellogg. I proceed to greet Kellogg using the standard human protocol for meeting someone you don't like, and afterwards I disassemble his brain and read his diary before heading up to the roof to see a huge zeppelin enter the commonwealth while blasting propaganda over their speaker system. I then start making my way back to Sanctuary, and along the way there, I activate the D.A.R.E. initiative in my protocols to rid the commonwealth of Wolfgang and Simone. I then make my way to Ten Pines Bluff to complete the quest from earlier before going to speak with Preston. After that, I spend a really long time running around doing radiant quests with Preston. This ranged from things like killing mole rats at the Starlight Drive-In, to going to Greentop Nursery where I had to go to Dunwich Borers and fight the raiders there. Honestly, I kinda wanna take a look at this fight with the raiders a bit more, as it was incredibly terrifying. The raiders do a ton of damage, and there are a lot of them, and they have really good gear. And added on top of all of that, for whatever reason, the mod decided now is when I won't be able to use the Pip-Boy at all, so healing is off the table and I end up nearly dying multiple times as I fight my way through the horde of raiders both outside and inside the mine. Midway through this fight, I did get the Pip-Boy working, so that did make this a little bit easier, but this was by far the hardest combat I've run into yet. If this is how fights are gonna look in the late game, I need to make sure I have a ton of healing supplies on hand and focus in to avoid getting caught with my pants down, or in this case, without cover to hide behind. After turning in all of these quests, Preston eventually tells me that he he thinks we should take the old Minutemen HQ named the Castle. So I swim over to the castle and start the battle by killing all of the Mirelurks with my twin miniguns of doom before taking on the Mirelurk Queen. There really isn't much to talk about as the fight was relatively easy, so moving on I make my way back to Diamond City and run into a surprise Preston just right outside the gates of Diamond City. Well I guess I'll tell him to follow me before heading into Nick's office where together we devise a plan to go rooting around inside of Kellogg's brain. I then head over to the memory den and do the song and dance with Dr. Amari before entering the memory lounger so I can photobomb all of Kellogg's memories. I think this is one of my favorite parts of all the robot runs because it really does make sitting through Kellogg's memories bearable, just sitting there and looking at it and laughing. It always puts a smile on my face, but eventually, as all good things do, it comes to an end and I need to go find Virgil in the glowing sea. So I venture out into the irradiated wasteland while obliterating all of the monsters in my path until I find a Deathclaw that took his anger management classes to heart and refused to attack me. I really wanted to see how much damage he would do, but he just stared at me and occasionally threw rocks. Like, come on, dude, get your aggression up. The, like, the low testosterone Deathclaw out here. I got the one Deathclaw who's a pacifist. Anyways, I speak with Virgil in his cave, and he sends me to go kill a courser, but unfortunately, on the way out of the glowing sea, I get stuck in a hole, and, well, here's my live reaction. Oh, no, oh, this, this can't be the end of the run. No, I've been thwarted. A hole in the ground. We've answered the question. Can I beat Fallout 4 survival difficulty permadeath as a sentry bot? No. Anyways, I head over to Green Tech Genetics and we haven't had a carnage montage yet. So let's just do that.
With the Courser dead and his chip in my pocket, I head over to the railroad and get it decoded before returning to Virgil and getting the plans for the signal interceptor. I then start heading back towards Sanctuary to build the signal interceptor, but along the way I get a little distracted with killing an alien and completing another quest for Preston by clearing out the Tappington Boathouse and building a recruitment beacon in the settlement. After a while though, I meander my way back to Sanctuary and speak with Preston completing some quests before speaking with Sturgis and building the signal interceptor. I make a decision in this moment to do a bunch more settlement quests for Preston instead of using the teleporter, and in hindsight I should have used the teleporter and gotten the Courser chip in my Pip-Boy so that way I could just teleport back to the CIT ruins because it would have saved me a bunch of time, so a little bit inefficient, but all of this was leading up to the fact that I have now been given the Old Guns quest at the castle, and this quest is really important to the run as I need to deal with somebody who's been impersonating me for a couple hundred years. So I go and speak with Ronnie Shaw, who wants to get me into the castle's armory so we can build some artillery, and I agree to help her before entering the underground section of the castle, where I encounter the devious impersonator who has stolen my namesake and looks just like me. This cannot stand, and I fell the wannabe protagonist where he stands before going about finishing the quest by building some artillery. I then use the artillery to blow up a small house before heading back to Sanctuary and using the teleporter to enter the Institute, where I meet all of the division leads before starting a fight with the entire Institute. This turned out to be a bad decision, as I didn't realize I needed to kill Father in particular to become an enemy of the Institute, so I have to wade through a ton of synths and scientists firing lasers at me constantly as I make my way to Sean's room to kill him. I end up using a lot of healing supplies, but eventually I kill Sean and head up to the signal relay, where I exit the Institute before getting a quest to defend the castle from an Institute attack. So I head over to the castle and build a bunch of turrets before the attack starts, and well, the combat is brutal. It starts off pretty okay, between me, the Minutemen, and the turrets were able to mow down synth after synth, but after a while I find myself pretty much alone with a bunch of coursers and patrollers. I fight valiantly, and slowly but surely I'm whittling through their numbers. 60% complete, 70, 80, but then I hit 90% complete and come down a staircase to take on the last few synths, but in my hubris, I get caught in an animation, unable to move, and die. I was devastated by this. This is pretty much the final combat test in the game. All that's left is attacking the Institute, and that fight is not hard as you can just use the Minutemen the entire time. I considered quitting since the run is already dead, as I am not a full side sentry and I even got stuck at one point. But here at Willow Industries, we see to it that a job gets done. So I went back to the beginning and spent many hours running through the main storyline and the Minutemen quests again, and I think this deserves a montage, so here it is.
With that pain out of the way, here we are at the castle once more, and this time I build way more turrets and space them out even further so grenades can't kill them right before the fight kicks off. I then let the turrets and Minutemen do most of the fighting until near the end where I have to take out a ton of coursers and synths on my own. Eventually I manage to fell all of the synths except for one courser that I let run away to tell everyone of the horror the Institute experienced today. I then speak with Ronnie, Preston, and Sturgis before heading over to this sewer system where I fight through more synths, turrets, and ghouls, and the combat here has me anxious the entire time as I'm just remembering the death at the castle, but after taking it slow and giving respect to each small battle, I make my way into this pipe and enter the institute where I'm stuck again. Well, this is awkward. Another point where I can't progress. Well, I go into first person and get through the pipe before continuing the siege of the Institute by fighting my way through the old robotics section. The combat here is fast paced, but not too scary as I'm able to dispatch the small groups of synths without taking too much damage. But I do get a bit worried here as I run out of healing supplies mid fight, but there's nothing to do about it. So I continue to press forward and activate the prototype sentry bot so it can help me deal with the remaining synths. And after a while, of watching him rip and tear through the synths one by one, I take him and the last couple of enemies down in this section before making my way over to the bioscience division, where I massacre the scientists, synths, and gorillas with the very satisfying dual miniguns. I have to say, out of all of the robot runs, this one wins it for satisfaction factor. It's so much fun, but the Protectron one is probably still my favorite. Anyways, I enter the main section of the Institute and battle my way through yet more synths, this time including a Courser and a legendary, but at this point I was getting more confident that I'm going to complete the run, so I start being more aggressive and charging down synths. I then enter advanced systems, and this is it. This is the final fight of the run, and I play it out really slowly. I avoid taking any big risks, and slowly but surely whittle down the numbers of enemies in the reactor room until none are left standing. I then plant the fusion bomb on the nuclear reactor and get teleported out of the reactor room, where I adopt a child synth and get teleported out of the Institute, where I press a big red button and blow up the Institute while answering the question, can I beat Fallout 4 Permadeath Survival Difficulty as a sentry bot? No. No, I really can't. Between the fact that I am not a full-sized sentry bot and still manage to get stuck, I don't think it's possible with my rule set. I'm sure if I size myself up to a normal sentry bot size, I could find some bug or glitch or use the console to get through the game, but that would be brave breaking my rules. So in short, no, I can't beat the game as a sentry bot. Regardless, thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed, please consider liking and subscribing and leaving a comment down below. I'd like to thank my channel members and patrons as their support has been tremendous, and if you like this run, you'll probably like my challenge run where I try and beat Fallout 4 as a Protectron. You all are beautiful, and this is Willow, signing off.